Hello friends. In this video, you'll see a manhwa titled Couple Breaker. Part 1 to 3. In this story, you will see real feelings and nobility, despite cheating and betrayal. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. By doing this, you will really help the channel to go further. Thank you. All right, let's get started. A program to find out if your partner is really the one for life. Will there be temptation in money or success? The total prize is 500 million. So let's test your partner's loyalty. The schoolgirls compared this show to another Korean show. They all seemed to be identical, but they were desperate to see the winner. When is it going to start? It's time to introduce the cast. The steam war begins. A few months ago, a girl pondered over the combination of her look, a blue top and jeans with a unique design, and the finishing touch. The leather top gave charisma. Yang Taren was ready, a 25-year-old girl from the fashion department. She was adored and welcomed by everyone, giving various compliments. And now it was time for the presentation. The heroine was quite erudite and fashion savvy. Yes, she was a badass. Of course, being too perfect isn't always for people. So sometimes you have to make mistakes. Like now, here comes Gong Joa. She's 23 years old, also from the fashion department. I, the girls had never spoken before, but it seems the last one was a little secretive. Why did she ignore Yang Tarin? Could it be different with Chou Jiayangmo? He's 25 years old, he's the main character's boyfriend and they live together. He obviously didn't know anything about fashion. He needs help now, now he can safely take a picture and post it. The kids had a new neighbor. Maybe he was from their school. Bong Yonsik, a 23 year old guy from the composition department. He knew Gong Joa, a girl helped him with unpacking. She told him that her son Bei had said hello to her today and she was so excited that she didn't respond. And it bothered her so much. Wasn't that strange Gong Joa was just avoiding her? But how did Yang Tyron know her name? The guy was the only one who said she was beautiful. And he was going to say it every day. But a couple of months later, the protagonist and her neighbor began to have a somewhat unusual relationship. And now the first couple was to be introduced on the show. Chokuyamo and Gong Joa, the second couple, however, was Yang Taren and Bong Yoon Sik. What was going on? How did it happen? I wonder how they got to this point. One afternoon, Bong Bong Yoon Sik and Gong Joa were going out for something. Even though the girl was a little worried, she still wanted to sing again. So she put on her mask and gave herself to the music. Not as many people showed up as they had hoped. But it was the first showcase. Her voice sounded familiar to many. So she grabbed Bong Yoon Sik and asked him to leave. The guys ran into a crowd of people who had come to watch the other performers. Gong Joa was upset because she was no match for that girl. At this time, Cho Goyangma was looking at his profile. He was constantly being sent private messages by girls. Of course, it was expected. He should have taken care of his subscribers. And his girlfriend's words were making him blush so much. Yang Taru made a plan for shopping, but the budget was limited. It was necessary to make every effort. Chokiyomo had been on the diet for three months, so he had to try on a new outfit. And Yang Taren couldn't wait to see it all. It was time to go shopping. The main character was having fun picking out outfits for Cho Yang Wo. Maybe she should make a pair of outfits. Sure, they spent a lot of money, but it was definitely worth it. Yang Tarin loved fashion so much that their shopping center would become mega cool. Having fun every day with Cho Gyeong Mo, planning the future together, feeling so young, cool, and awesome. Back then, the protagonist seemed like she could do anything. Until this meeting happened. Cho Xiaonum thought Gong Joa was pretty cute, and she herself answered someone on the phone that she'd just bumped into someone by accident. He looked like a model, like a celebrity. Bong Yuan Sik, on the other hand, complimented her. She couldn't take her eyes off him. It was unusual for her to dress up. She's so cute. Maybe she'll perform without a mask today. But Gong Joa still wasn't ready for that. She could be recognized as a former singer, and it made her sad. Recently, one very popular debut had been noticed. She was so bright and winding. Gong Joa watched the video and reasoned that she looked like an ordinary girl with unremarkable looks. 
That must have been the reason for her disappearance. But Bong Yang-sik didn't think so. He loved her and thought that Gong Zhuo's face was beautiful and her voice was unparalleled. It was a pity that the girl had said goodbye to all the things from her past life. Those words gave her confidence. After a while, she was lucky enough to find one CD after all. Brilliant Idol's Lost Album. That is hers. Bong Yang-sik wanted to take it for himself and she wasn't sorry at all. It was a priceless item to him. At this time, Yang Tyrin was walking by and saw some guy hitting on Gong Zhuo. He wanted to chat with her, but it clearly wasn't mutual. The protagonist approached them and pretended to be her friend, asking the questionable guy about it. He was confused by this. Such a murky type was holding a nice girl against her will. This inhibited short guy even dared to insult Yang Tyrin, but she was not embarrassed by it at all. She was completely confident in herself and her words. Of course, what should she be afraid of? The stranger didn't even manage to reply and just turned around, walking away. Gung Jua thanked her. Yang Taren, on the other hand, told her to immediately talk about the fact that she would have to write a report if he kept prying without asking. They had often bumped into each other, but this was the first time they had spoken. Gong Jua usually didn't participate in social activities. But Yang Tarain still suggested that she take a vacation together, and she seemed to be embarrassed by it, in a good way. The girl reached her boyfriend's apartment, but forgot exactly where the door was. Kung Joa left her album at the door and texted Bong Yon Sik about it, except he didn't have that bag. Yang Tarain got the album. Cho Gyeom thought it was an advertisement and threw the CD in the trash. Bong Yon Sik, on the other hand, tried to find it, because it was a rarity. And so when Yang Taran went out to throw away the trash, the guy asked if she found the disc in her bag. The girl went back to the apartment, but the disc had vanished somewhere. Yang Taran came back to say that the album had gone somewhere and she couldn't find it, but she didn't need to anymore. Bong Yoon Sik was angry. That's how their flawed relationship began. The guy wanted it to be a joke, but Yang Taran explained that the disc was in her bag and she'd only brought it into the house except Bong yeon said she had no right to throw his thing in the trash. The main character was already screaming. She was being accused of something she didn't do. Such a slight misunderstanding led to the new neighbor no longer wanting to date Yang Taran. Except the girl wanted an explanation. She wanted to say something else. Trash? Bong yeon should have bagged up all the trash and only then left. He's the one who made a mess. What a temper that guy has. They pissed each other off and went back to their apartments. Yang Taran wanted to know what kind of album it was. It must have been an old singer. In the past, this song was a super hit. The artist released just one song and disappeared somewhere. And it was Gong Jua. Yang Taran didn't even know about it. And it seems like her faculty didn't either. Then that neighbor was an ardent fan of hers. It seems like the girl really screwed up at Yang Taran's faculty party in Gong Jua's basement. Everyone complimented her that she looked peerless, but it was true. As it turned out, Gong Zhou was going to inject herself with filler. She wanted to look her best because she hadn't seen her classmates in a long time. Just for one day. Uh, except that at the street performance, the girl also wanted to perform without a mask. Gong Zhou wanted to become more beautiful so that no one could snatch away the former singer in her. Bong Yunzik didn't bother to discourage her. Her classmates were happy to see her. They wanted to have a blast, so they suggested a game that Yang Taran adored. Gong Jua was always losing. She was asked to sing once again, and one of the guys even reminded her of Brilliant Idol, the singer. Yang Taran decided to take matters into her own hands and stepped in. She was terrible at singing. Gong Jua was fun though. The girl thanked her and confessed her secret, but the protagonist was already aware of it. Gong Jua thought she was cool. And the girl, in turn, wanted to always talk to her because Gong Jua reminded her of one person. The guy she loved. They would definitely see each other more often now. The girls had a lunch together, tried on clothes made by Yang Taran, tried new things, and chatted. That's when the main character told her about a place, which she regretted very much. The casting call for people who want to test their feelings. On the show, the couple breaker has finally been announced. Gong Joa inquired if Bong Yun Sik had seen Love Signal, but the guy could only hear about it. As it turned out, the producers had launched a new show, and it featured couples. There was a lot of excitement, details were not known, but probably 
To earn a cash prize, you have to touch the partner of another couple. Who would even agree to that? One would have to be an interested person. It's unlikely that Bong Yeon Sik will watch this show. Of course, Gong Jo wanted to dress the same way as Yang Taren. Did the girl really only wear branded items? But the heroine shopped either online or at imported stores. Did Yang Taren see the announcement for the new show? As it turns out, yes, from her boyfriend. The other female students thought she'd be perfect for it, except she had a boyfriend. The girl didn't want to become famous. So it seemed a little strange. And why were those girls laughing all the time? Did this situation seem funny to them? Cho Yang Miyomo was also handsome. So the others thought they were a colorful couple. Meanwhile, Gong Jua was quietly thinking about her own thoughts. She had no appetite lately. The girl said she was dieting. Uh, she was definitely embarrassed by the mask she had to hide behind. Bong Yeon Sik offered to increase the number of appearances, but Gong Jo wanted him to change his image. It wasn't enough for her. She thought that if they were a colorful couple, they'd have more fans. What a disgruntled person. Gong Jo tried to make him look like Yang Taren's boyfriend. Was she the one who advised her to lose weight and get a facial? Couldn't even answer. After a while, Bong Yeon Sik saw his roommate, who 100% had a special connection with the security guard. They even chatted informally. Was there no respect at all? That's insolent. There was an aura of contempt emanating from him. However, Yang Taren didn't care. The next time she put away the soju bottles, Bong Yoon Sik was amazed at her stamina. What was it this time? Lately, the girl had been busy preparing for the opening of the shopping center, disturbing even the neighbors. But the strange neighbor continued to gawk at her like this. What was that stare again? Gong Jo had an audition this day, and the girl didn't even bother to eat something. She needs her strength. This was clearly already too much. She didn't even feel like responding to this, so she just left. But on the way out, she fainted. Wow. At the star party for the launch of Nice Cho Giamo's new products, Kyung Mo was meeting his buddies. One of them asked if anyone was in the new show. The concept is quite provocative which is a bit risky, but it definitely guaranteed success. If Cho Giamo participated, it would create a sensation. His girlfriend was a fashion student and had a sense of style, which meant he had to go on the show. There were even rumors that the man's style and account were influenced by Yang Tyron, which made him very wary. It seems like it was true. The next day, however, Cho Giamo had some kind of request for her. How about them and the show The Couple Breaker? He wanted to participate. What a twist. Although it was expected. And Hillen, in his opinion, or maybe someone else's, this reality show was a success waiting to happen. If they participated, they could definitely become popular. Why was this idea so appealing to him? Did the guy really want to go on it? It's not that easy. You could be criticized from all sides. But Cho Gyeongmo said that if Yang Taeyeon was by his side, he could handle anything. Except right now, they were too busy preparing the shopping center. Did they have any free time uh, for Yang Taren right now? The project came first. However, Cho Gyeonmo stood his ground. He didn't hear her. The girl didn't need other people's admiration, much less popularity. She had no desire to participate in the show. Now he's dumping all the blame on her. Turns out it was Yang Taren who didn't hear him. The man turned to shouting. He was afraid that he was going to be stuck in the same place. He hadn't had an increase in subscribers for a long time. What else was there to do? It was important for him to get that admiration. Chogi and Mamo wanted to become famous. Yang Tyron remained calm. Where did he get such thoughts from? He became more confident and successful than before. So what had happened? Gong Jua, on the other hand, ended up going to the emergency room. But even now she was still thinking about the audition. What was she even thinking about? Does it matter right now? She needed to rest and be examined by doctors. However, the girl's message was that she would regret her whole life if she didn't end up there. It was maddening. Bong Yeonzik was furious. And yet, she made it into the audition audience. One of the jury members didn't even know that Gong Joa performed under the pseudonym Brilliant Idol. But why didn't she write about it? But even so, the man didn't see the highlight of her performance. She sang well, but something was still missing. What about her looks? Her style was unattractive and even colorless. The audition was awful. Gong Joa didn't know what kind of person they wanted to see. Someone like Yang Taren, 
And why hadn't she eaten anything again? Did she feel like riding in an ambulance again? Gong Shua was still very attractive and slim even now, but it wasn't enough for that. Anyway, she had already definitely decided to correct her face. Plastic surgery or liposuction? Chin surgery. Bong Yunzik didn't want to hear that. He was still silent about fillers and Botox, but this was going over the top. Gong Joa. I was definitely talking some nonsense. She felt like Bong Yunzik was purposely discouraging her because he didn't want to support her. He pissed her off and the girl ran away. Yang Terin, on the other hand, came up with a jacket design and made a sample. Chio Giyamo looked stunning in it. The best shopping center model ever, and how would it look on her? As it turned out, their store would be selling unisex merchandise. Laundry aside, even on her the jacket fit perfectly. She was getting high that she constantly managed to create special things. Yang Tarin joked, that Cho Giyamo didn't match her, but that really pissed him off. The guy defiantly walked out and closed the door. He didn't even answer the phone. The girl went back inside and almost missed the elevator. Inside was Bong yoon sik who had purposely tried to close the door. What was he doing? Because he didn't want to ride together. Cho yoon mo on the other hand, went to his favorite bar. And after there, Gong Joa walked in. His gaze gently enveloped her frail figure for the girl was crying. At that moment, their relationship cracked. Bong Joa recognized him as he recognized her. The guy really impressed her then. He had a cool style, so she figured he was some kind of celebrity. But Cho Yamo was just a freelance model, and he had a lot of followers. Although he didn't find it surprising. Gung Joa didn't have any social media accounts, which was strange. After all, with her beauty, a girl could easily gain popularity. She seemed so charming to him on their first meeting. Both of them had their hearts beating faster. But young Taren was glad that she had caught her neighbor. She had always wondered why this guy kept throwing strange glances at her. It was like she was some kind of bedbug, even though Bong Yeonsik denied it. But it happened every time. It was like a cat and a dog getting into a fight. Electric charges were hurling from the elevator, but still, they went back to their apartments. Yang Taren threw in one last quip that if her neighbor kept glaring at her like that, she wouldn't just let it go. Bong Yoon-sik, on the other hand, couldn't stand her. Their partners, on the other hand, were enjoying each other's company. Gong Joa always wanted to be famous, and Cho Geoemo was sure that she would succeed because she had a cute and expressive appearance. However, he did not yet know what a coward his new pal was. The girl was contemplating beauty injections or plastic surgery because that way, in her opinion, she would become much more confident. Except that the people around her were against it. Is it so bad to want to change yourself? She wanted it. That's why she was angry. Cho Goyamo objected. Who even dared to say such nonsense? He understood her. If one wanted to become more beautiful, why not? Today, it's not a big deal to go and get an operation. He wanted to help her, like being a help to her. He promised to make her beautiful, only if Gong Jua herself wanted it. Her heart was pounding frantically. The girl thought that her conversation partner had starred in various shows. And as it turned out, he had recently received one offer just recently. A new show? No. Not from them. Gong Jo wanted to definitely appear in such a program. It was such a chance to become a star. That's great. Cho Giyamo still didn't understand. By becoming more attractive, she would be able to gain popularity, especially when he had taken it upon himself to help. Was she really that attractive? There was a spark between them. And the motorcyclist only contributed to that even more. Famous and gorgeous. That was how she saw Cho Giyang Mom. He was the only one who said he could definitely help her. Ong Joa made the first move, but it came as a surprise to both of them. Once again, she ran away. A real coward. Was it really all a dream? Even Yang Taren was wondering what her boyfriend had been up to last night. That's right, doing what? Yang Taren wanted to know where he went because he didn't come back in a sober state. The man only laughed. So the girl changed the subject and announced that they had to go somewhere. To Yen Jonggo Island. She had wanted to go there for a long time. Gong Joa, on the other hand, thought back to last night and what she had done without thinking. What a fool. She must be out of her mind. Bong Yun sik suggested she go for a walk in the fresh air, which was a good idea. The weather was nice outside. 
As it turned out, Yang, Taerin, and Cho Giangmo had already been here on their first trip. It's been so long. It was unbelievable. It was as if it was yesterday. Everyone at school always wondered what Yang Taerin would do next. And once again, the girl showed up naked as usual. It was a rebellion against the school uniform, where she was trying to get herself to be allowed to wear casual clothes. Except the school administration wouldn't budge. How could they change standards that were approved 80 years ago? Teachers thought uniforms were supposed to be a little uncomfortable, and their school was the only one that wore it. None of her classmates were going to support her. Why couldn't she be like everyone else? Cho Gyeongmo was the only one who admired her. Really, Yang Taerin was cool. His, on the other hand, was always different. Wherever the couple went, everyone kept saying that the girl was wasting her time on the man. Couldn't they see how cute he was? Cho Gyeongmo was her shadow. Knew nothing about style and how to look pretty. But Yang Taerin thought he was attractive and she even wanted to help him become even more unique than he was now. It all started with an Instagram and a thousand followers. She was right and now they were lighting Bengal lights on the beach. Yang Taran next to him was happy. But what about him? He thought of Gong Jua, who by the way was with Bang Yonsik at this moment, except she wasn't happy. The girl remembered the first day of university. That's when Bang Yonsik recognized her. He recognized her as the singer who suddenly disappeared. From her voice, he's liked her songs for a long time. But Gong Joa just ran away. She was afraid that rumors would spread, and so she tried to avoid the strange guy. The next time she met him, he apologized and gave her his song. Maybe that's what killed her. In real life, she didn't seem to feel that thrill anymore. And so the two couples met, all four of them hiding their secret. Such an unexpected twist. The guys decided to have dinner together. Although the atmosphere was so-so, for everyone. Yang Taran didn't know that her friend was her roommate's girlfriend. She introduced Cho Gian Yammo, whom she already knew. The two felt embarrassed and decided to have some privacy. Bong Yonsik and Yang Taran were left alone. Now she could see why the neighbor was angry about the disc. So he was some kind of an ardent fan. Although even Bong Yonsik was surprised, because his girlfriend was always leading story about her beautiful friend. But who would have thought that she would turn out to be Yang Taerin? But what's with the weird atmosphere again? Cho Gyeongmo, on the other hand, seemed to be waiting for the girl from last night to approach him. They were silent for a while until they realized what had really happened and what kind of joke fate had played on them. Gong Joa had left him for the second time with a rapidly beating heart. It clearly wasn't a mistake, and he wouldn't be able to forget it. Cho Gyeongmo ran after her until she stopped. The man was going crazy. He didn't understand what was happening to him. But Gong Joa wanted to say that Cho Yanmo was dating someone special, like Yang Tarin. How hard it was for her to say those words. But to him, Gong Joa looked just as special. Both of them thought at the same time that this was not the right thing to do. They can't, but they want to. The next day, Cho Yanmo was a little strange and downcast. He was on the phone all day, just like Gong Joa. Bong Yoon-sik was tense about it too. By the evening, the two met and didn't even respond to their partner's calls and messages. At the university, Gong Joa was also acting a bit aloof, even with Yang Taerin. But what was going on, no one understood. And even her birthday, the girl spent her birthday with Cho Yangmo. And after a while, he asked Yang Taerin for a breakup. Cho Gyeongmo packed his bags and didn't look her in the eye. What was he even talking about? Why did everything happen so suddenly? The man told Yang Tyron not to call him anymore. Her friends could sense that there was something wrong with him. Right, as it turned out, no one liked him. Only Cho Yongmo would regret his choice. The girl is sure that he would be without anything. Gong Dua and Bang Yonsik had also broken up. So was this the end? I mean, he didn't even give her the gift. Maybe it's for the best. Even her album was hard to part with. Yang Tearing kept thinking about the time she spent alone with Cho Gyoelmo. She wanted to build a future together with him. Then it happened, the man shared a publication for the first time in a long time. In the photo, he was with Gong Jua. Could it all be a dream? The girl started ringing the doorbell of her neighbor, who was clearly not happy to have guests. She was interested in a single question. Had Bang Yun Sik broken up with Gong Jua? What did she want to hear from him? Where in the world did she live? Cho Gyeongmo and Gong Joa weren't answering their phone calls. No one knew their whereabouts. 
so the guy could be at her place. Bong Yuan Sik asked that his flighty neighbor leave him alone, and the door slammed shut. What a pushy one. Even then, she kept knocking and yelling. How did Cho Guayamo even have the nerve to post something? Like that on social media. Thanks. Taryn was freaking out, and Bong Yoon Sik was remembering his ex-girlfriend asking him to change his image, how angry she was at him. The premise had been known for a long time, but Yang Tarin would definitely not wish for their happiness. There was such darkness coming from these two apartments. The aura would have to be cleaned. While they were suffering from the betrayal, Cho Giangmo received a message from the director's team of the couple Breaker. The opportunity for revenge will come soon. People have slowly started to recognize Chu Giangmo and former singer Brilliant Idol. What was their relationship like? Was it the same singer? It was only speculation, as there was no official confirmation. But the face and voice were definitely hers. Cho Giangmo's account skyrocketed. The likes and followers started to increase and the content expanded and both of them were overjoyed, although Gong Juo was still fixated on the negative comments. She wanted to dream with him, to become famous together, both of them in their fantasies. Intoxicated with happiness and cute images, they had completely forgotten about the people they had dreamed about before. The content of the new show is to test their love to the limit when four couples show up and start interacting with the opposite party in any way. It is an experimental format program that brings out the weaknesses and vulnerabilities in a relationship. The intent was really serious. But in the case of Cho Gaiyong Mo and Gung Joa, then all they had to do was play the role of a couple who would demonstrate the strength of their love. The guys were also interested in this, however. Would it be necessary to make a statement that Gong Joa used to be a singer? Their plan was to not just mention it in passing, but to make it official as well. Wouldn't this be a great opportunity for her? The girl was afraid of exposing her shameful past, which was why she didn't want to promote herself under the name Brilliant Idol. But Cho Giang Mo thought that it would be wrong if she continued to hide like this her whole life. They would wrap it in their favor so that they could become even more popular. Their desire to become famous. Bong Jua had to let everyone see her face and talent if she really wanted to become successful. The girl asked him to make a promise to never betray each other, not to fight and only move forward after breaking up with their exes. He, on the other hand, was sure that their love was stronger than those who had been together. For five or ten years, would they definitely make it work? They wanted to believe that they would definitely make it through all the difficulties and obstacles. There were already various rumors about their participation, and Yang Taren's friends were recognizing Cho Yangmo as her boyfriend. No one understood what was going on, so they called her. Yang Taren didn't deny that they had broken up. But she wasn't worried about it anymore. She was just angry. But everyone was sure that Cho Giangmo had only risen to the top because of her. There's no arguing about it. But they'd already gotten over it, even if the memories couldn't be erased. It was leaked online that in order to prove their love, each of the couple had to be intimate with the other by walking on a knife edge. A thought leaked into Yang Terran's mind. A thought of something that should not have been done under any circumstances. An idea that shouldn't have crossed her mind. She ran to her roommate and inquired that he was already aware of it. The guy was very upset and was having a hard time dealing with it. What did she want from him? Revenge. Yang Turing couldn't accept that their former partners were now living a happy life. The thought of teaming up and getting revenge in a new show settled in her mind. A crazy idea that should have never existed. Bong Yonsek gave no answer but warned that he was about to close the door. Yang Terran couldn't bear to see him go, and so pulled away by the collar. She sounded completely serious. The intention of the reality show was to break up couples in love. Isn't that the best place to get revenge? The guy didn't understand what his crazy neighbor was even talking about, so he just tried to escape. Except today was the deadline to apply to participate. Still, Bong Yonze closed the door. But Yang Tarin decided to cheat on something. She spent the whole night typing out the show application herself. The next day, Bong Yoon Sik was watching TV, but thought about a social networking site that he purposely didn't log into. He came across Gong Jua's account where the girl was singing his song. Now then, the guy changed his mind. He came to Yang Taren himself to see exactly how they were going to carry out their revenge. She was already waiting for him. 
The first was to pretend that they had been dating for five days because it was couples that were needed to participate. But for that, they needed to come up with a plausible backstory. They were going to leave out the fact that they had both gone through a breakup and then after meeting and going on a date, found comfort in each other. And the reason they got their hearts broken in the past is because their exes felt attracted to each other. They cheated, used, and left them alone. That was the story as the reason for their relationship. Thus, they created a couple that formed five days ago. Unfortunately, Bong Yusik didn't even have any photos of them. The guys filed into the show to face off against Cho Yang Mo and Gong. Oh, uh, there were already five minutes left. Why? To denounce their exes and show everyone the injustice they had to face. The application was successfully submitted. Notification of the review status would be sent out in about a week. So now all that was left to do was wait. Would they pass or would they fail in this attempt? Young Tyron had no idea, but she only wanted to exact revenge. What would happen if they did succeed? So that's the meaning behind the phrase. Oh, what's worse, letting go right away or making them regret it, choosing between the bad option and the just plain awful option, eagerly awaiting the results. Their application had been accepted. Yang Tyron's premonition did not fail. About the style, they must have just fallen in love with her style after seeing the pictures. The next step would be an interview where they got to play a couple. Except something had to be done about Bong Yon Sik. He couldn't come to the interview looking like that. No way! Even now, the image of Gong Joa was popping up in his mind, talking about changing his image. But would Yang Terran be able to help him? He never had his own style and tastes in clothes because he wasn't interested in such things. But Bong Yon Sik would like to try to change with her help so that everyone can now only see the best version of him. So he turned to a professional. It was stunning. Yang Turin couldn't imagine that her roommate would look so attractive. Oh, she'd hate to admit it, but it seems like they're really going to make it work. Anyway, looks were important, of course, but they should have worked on the rest of it as well. The guys needed to practice acting like a couple. But Yang Turin's ways didn't really appeal to Bong Yoon Sik. The guy didn't want to embarrass himself that much. Maybe he should have been reminded that they were just going to get back at their exes. What would he do to succeed when he didn't even have connections in the right industry? Well, try to shine with talent. You need to be able to do at least one thing, or better yet, all of them at once. And one could start with a sweet nickname for couples. Bang Yon Saik didn't even realize that. I accept that Yang Taran wasn't happy about these nicknames either. Why was he breaking down like that? How are they supposed to believe that they're really dating? need to put more emotion and confidence into his speech. They spent a lot of time trying, even though they were trying. Yang Tarin, on the other hand, hoped that Bong yoon Sik could do it all. He had even practiced in front of the mirror, but her image kept popping up in his mind. Well, they'd have to rehearse the phrase, hello, this is Yang Bong. The day of the interview came. The first couple used a conversational style intentionally. The second couple couldn't concentrate and couldn't stop worrying. There were even individuals like, except the jury didn't manage to pick anyone up. If things continued like this, they would be in big trouble. However, the next pair seemed to be quite entertaining. A couple that had only been dating for five days. The next candidates walked in. Everyone opened their mouths in amazement at Yang Tairin and Bong Yoon Sik. And it was true. They looked great. This couple was made to be in the show. They were so energetic, even though they had only met each other for a short time. Could they show the power of their love? Something that people would watch their reality show for. The judges wanted to make sure that Yang Taerin and Bong Yoon Sik were not pretending, but were real partners. The girl claimed that the length of the relationship didn't play a role. They're going to give it some more heat. They are a five day old couple who can absolutely do anything. But what is it? Something went wrong. Bong Yon Sik pretended to be offended by the jury members' reactions because they didn't take their love seriously. Good for you. The men wanted to know more, what they were doing. There was an awkward silence as everyone looked at them, as it was written in their profile. Their exes had fallen in love with each other at first sight, and so the relationship between the couple had begun. Finally, 
I was finally over, as it turned out Bong yoon was not a bad actor. In any case, he did better than Yang Terran could have expected, only he should have been more careful about acting that they didn't discuss, otherwise there might have been problems in their performance. They were behaving with dignity though. He wasn't a kid anymore, but suddenly the show would have to do something worse than it was today. You can really fall in love in reality shows like this, but that would never happen to him. Yang Terran believed that Bong Yoon-sek just had to work up the courage, even though there were quite a few guys running after her too. Except, in his opinion, she had nothing to worry about. That bastard. The jury members noticed that these two were from the same university. I has Gong Joa. Hang Taran even studied in the same department. It was very interesting. It was time for the individual interview. Bong Yon Saik and Yang Taran were asked to go to the auditorium. The main interview was over, but they had prepared additional questions especially for their pair. It was known that the guys hadn't dated for more than five days. So the staff decided to test how well they knew each other. So here's a question for you. Her boyfriend's favorite band, how could she even know? Oh no, she didn't. Brilliant idol. Did her answer have to be the same? It wasn't young Taryn decided to try randomly. Beat. She liked them too. As it turned out, it was the right answer. The jury member thought the girl would answer at random, but it was correct. The only thing left to do was to finish her part. Now a question for Bong yoon -sik. What is Yang Tarin's favorite alcoholic drink? It was a fail. I guess it was too complicated, except he had the answer. Crystal with Guinness. The guy remembered the very night he'd met her throwing out the trash. That's the right answer. Right on the bullseye, the man thought the question puzzled the guy, but it was unbelievable. It seemed that the couple did have real feelings for each other. There was no doubt about it. Bong Yonsik didn't think that hating her would come in handy. Yang Taran ran up to him and asked him about his favorite music group. He liked the lyrics and music, which was surprising to her. About her question, the guy guessed. It wasn't easy though. Gong Joa received a call from the producer. So Cho Yang Mo asked to be put on speakerphone. There was some very entertaining news for the couple. Were they familiar with Kmeke Entertainment? They said that if the couple maintained the highest rating throughout the show, they would be signed a contract with them. Cho Jiomo and Gong Joa thought that finally there was nothing but a path strewn with flowers ahead of them. Except they couldn't imagine that there was a couple who was going to ruin their plans. The producer of the new show called Yang Taren, what was in store for them? Cho Yanmo was fixated on the negative comments under his photos. According to them, he dressed too plain and ordinary. No one was good for him. So what should he have worn on the first day of filming? Maybe Gong Jua could help him out. The girl had no sense of style. She had even only recently started fancying herself. Wasn't Cho Yangmo being a little too obsessive? She liked the way he dressed. However, the guy had Yang Taren picking out all of his clothes. And now she was doing it with Bong Yoon Sik. The girl didn't get discouraged but she didn't give up hope of finding the right look either. Above Chang Yang Mo and Gong Zhua decided to conduct a compatibility test. They were asked to click on a link that was sent to them. It resembled a game. First, the guy was asked to go on a date and choose a girl who he met next. His character spilled coffee on her. How would he proceed? Of course, this isn't really a compatibility test. It's a test on choosing the perfect soulmate. According to the preferences will be selected the most suitable candidate for dating. This will be the first shoot. Cho Gyeong Mo was really nervous. But didn't Gong Joa feel nervous? It's the first day of filming. They couldn't let their feelings be shaken. He had promised her. For Gong Joa, however, he was the only one. So the filming begins. They were given a letter. It was to be opened when they were alone. How they were to say goodbye and go away. The compatibility test that Cho Young Mo took was actually a test to find the perfect soulmate. He was asked to go to the meeting place with his ideal one now. For Gong Joa, it was also a surprise. She was slightly uneasy. Who was going to show up? And so the partner said hello, but who would have thought that he could have changed so much in such a short period of time? What about Cho Gi Young Mo? He also appreciated his new partner style, and it was unexpected for him. Now it's time for some sweet revenge.
a man asked his ex-girlfriend not to joke around with him like that, except she pretended she didn't understand what was being said. They were being filmed. The heroine was happy to meet him. She didn't expect to meet such a handsome guy. Really, it seemed like the first date was going to go great. It was crazy. What kind of situation is this? Yang Terin, on the other hand, was happy about his confusion. She immediately guessed about the test, so the twosome was already ready. But why was the girl still the perfect partner for Cho Gyeong Wong? Buang Yuan Sik was also happy to meet Gang Jua. She, on the other hand, couldn't understand how this could happen. She felt like it was some kind of surprise. The guy invited her to walk to the date spot, but all the way there, they were silent, and Gang Jua was in some kind of prostration. Bong Yun Sik continued to play his role, thinking that his new partner was rather shy. He felt a little embarrassed and tried his best to hide it. And after all, the guy never introduced himself. Though why should he, if they already knew each other? It was said that it was a date with the perfect partner. Bong Yun Sik didn't really expect to meet his ideal partner. Neither did Gong Jua. Her facial expression screamed it. His slightest movements frightened her. Of course. Even Cho Gyeongmo was embarrassed to be alone with young Tyrin. So it was she who took the initiative. The guys would be practicing ceramics. By the way, the girl was a pro at it, even though she was hiding it on camera. Cho Gyeongmo seemed to feel awkward. But what was he thinking about young Tyrin? This is a date with the perfect partner, the one most suited to his preferences. Was she his ideal? The man began to shake. He definitely couldn't be turned away from an honest answer now. Cho Gyeongmo replied that Yang Tyrin was similar to his ideal type. Did that mean like the active girls just like her? He seemed to be her type, even too much so. A stylish, handsome guy who looked like a puppy. Are you sure this isn't a dream? The man still couldn't believe it. The couple moved into a luxurious apartment, just like a real reality show. But Chong Yangmo didn't share her joy. He wanted to talk to her. The house was very beautiful. There must have been cameras everywhere. It would be a little awkward since all the conversations would be shown live. And here came the second couple. Then the third, the two real couples had already met and we were discussing the past day but Cho Yomo and Yang Tarin kept waiting. The girl complimented them on their style. Should they have gotten to know each other? For example, these two had already been together for 10 kids. So their couple was called 10 years. How long had they put up with each other? Suddenly the front door opened and they appeared on the doorstep. Surprise. Now it was okay to introduce themselves, the transfer couple. Their exes were in love with each other and had broken up with them, causing them to start dating. Checkmate. Yang Taren and Bong Yunzik had only been dating for five days at the time of their application. It was so touching. As a couple, they tried everything. And this was a reunited couple. Jai Yuri and Kwa Nuri, these two are La Meng Zhou and Dong He. Honestly, it's not a matter of principle. Cho Kian Mo and Gong Zhuo, on the other hand, were a popular couple because they were celebrities. Bong Yuan Sik, on the other hand, noticed that she participated by fully revealing her personality. Although she behaved differently with him, the filming was briefly suspended. Cho Gyeongmo decided to seize the moment and led Yang Taran away, demanding that she explain herself. To him, her behavior was laughable. Did she really want to get back at them? She even lied about dating Bong Yun Sik. But who said it was a lie? Cho Gyeongmo refused to believe it. Eng Taran and her roommate had really gotten close, and they decided to participate because they really wanted to. Except that when Cho Gyeongmo had called her here, she had ignored his request. So what changed? If she had agreed to his proposal back then, then this whole thing wouldn't have gotten this far. Fortunately, Bong Yun Sik came just in time. Even Goong Joa couldn't believe it now. Did they plan this whole thing? Was this really all they wanted to tell them? Yang Taren was happy to see them. But now, what a way to make a fuss. The girl stopped because it amused her so much. Did she succeed in playing the role of a suffering ex? Worthy of an award? But Gong Joa was sure that Cho Jiangmo had chosen Yang Taren as the perfect partner. Sure, he felt guilty, but wasn't it a mistake on her part too? Lee Mong Zhou and Dong Hesti were getting ready to get married. 
They had been in a relationship for 10 years. They decided to come on the show to see if they really should get married. Jiguri and Kwanuri, on the other hand, have gotten back and forth over 10 times, but they never thought they would still be together for so long. In fact, physically, they were a great match. On the show, they wanted to find out if it was true that they were only bonded by physical intimacy or not. Everything is already known about these two. They came here to become even more popular. Together, the guys wanted to get even more recognition. Yang, Taren, and Bong. Onsik wanted to show that time is not the most important thing in love. They wanted to show a more passionate nature than anyone else here. This place even had its own rules. The other members surrounded Gong Jaw and wondered where she had been missing all this time. Bong Yun-sik knew that talking like that would make her feel uncomfortable. Kwanuri decided to clarify. If it was true that the point of the show was really about physical contact with another couple, wasn't that fascinating? Except Yang Taren didn't need anyone besides Bong Yun-sik. The girl decided to go make coffee, and Gong Jua followed her. It had been so long, so it was unusual to see her outside of Yunai. Yang Taren asked Bong Yun-sik to help her. Except Gong Jua decided to cheat. She spilled the coffee on purpose. The man pushed his ex-girlfriend away, while the current girlfriend got burned. What was going on? Gong Joa was only happy about the situation. She felt pleasure. What guy in this situation would even care about someone else's girlfriend? Bong Yun Sik couldn't handle it. Who would believe them that they were dating? Gong Joa felt it too. Bong Yun Sik so didn't know why he acted this way. Thanks to the first hug between two people who were not couples, the touch menu became available. This was no longer a joke. It was much more serious than they had thought. Are they really going to have to kiss someone? Can't they just touch a hundred times? So Kwa Nuri could legitimately touch other girls? The contestants on the show had already been welcomed. From now on, they would become the separators. The more they could destroy other couples' relationships through touching and using tactics, the more likely they were to win. Only one winner will receive a cash prize. How much will the couple's relationships on the show break down, or on the contrary, become stronger? It all depended on the contestants themselves. Now we could familiarize ourselves with the rules. For each touch, both contestants received a reward. In case of refusal, the reward did not count for both of them. It was forbidden to touch your real partner. In case of being caught on such a thing, the winnings would be cut. This rule also applied to the time the partners would spend all filming. It was a surprise for everyone. They could get the cash prize only after they had passed the final test. First, they had to put on the watch that was on the table. With their help, it will be possible to check their account. The show The Couple Breaker begins. From this point on, everyone was forbidden to touch their partner. Therefore, everyone was allowed to touch him or her goodbye. Some may have been embarrassed, but some were happy to play on other people's emotions. Ang Yun-sik, on the other hand, remembered Yang Taren's words. What kind of guy would even care about someone else's girlfriend? They had to make everyone believe that they were dating. Was that why he took matters into his own hands? What was Bong Yun-sik doing? Although it seems like that's what everyone was waiting for. The kiss was definitely meant to bring some clarity. But it's not cool at all. What a passion. It's too indecent. Who would even do such a thing? Bong Yun Sik didn't understand what was going on because they've done worse. Hidden meaning. You have to give your best all the time and not pay much attention to it. Well, the kiss could be considered a declaration of war. Proof of their strong relationship. There was a fire between them. Gong Jua, on the other hand, wanted to talk to Bong Yun Sik. But about what? Luckily, he refused on his own. The girl whispered that he'd once been against being fancy, except that it's inherent in man to change. Someone also said something like that. These two were talking as if Yang Terran wasn't around. It's time for Pandora's mission. Check the location. Pandora's mission is an individual secret mission. Oh, if they successfully complete it, they will be awarded 5 million won. It is strictly forbidden to reveal the details of the mission to others. For example, Gong Jua being alone with a member of the opposite gender at close range for more than 10 minutes. 
Shogiyangmo, on the other hand, had to ignore his girlfriend more than five times. Yang Tyren should have told another contestant of the opposite Paul that she was jealous of his girlfriend. Now the game has really begun. Dong Hee offered to cook something and asked if there were any people who wanted to go to the market. Yang Tyren decided to take advantage of the situation and grab Cho Gaeyongmo's hand, asking him to join. Holding hands as 100,000 won. Bong Yeonsik, on the other hand, invited Gong Joa. She was getting angry as she looked at the couple, although these two were also feeling uncomfortable since they were connected by more. Yang Tyren didn't even let Gong Joa sit in the front. Wouldn't it be better for her to sit next to her Bong Yeonsik from behind? How angry the girl was. Cho Gyeongmo, on the other hand, was pondering that he couldn't avoid her all the time, so he decided to help with the seatbelt. He seemed to look happy. Bong Yoon-sik, on the other hand, wanted to believe that he didn't force his ex-girlfriend to ride together. It was nothing like that. Even though she responded like that, she still remembered about the kiss. Yang Tyron specifically chose only Cho Gyeongmo's favorite foods. And Bong yoon sik on the other hand, was trying to make sure his partner didn't get dirty. What's wrong with her face? The score so far. Kwa Nuri had 10,001, Gong Joa had zero, and so did Bong Yun sik and Lee Moon Joo. Dong Hee had 10,000. Cho Gyeongmo and Yang Tarin each had 120,001. A new time limited mission was starting. Within 10 minutes, there would be an opportunity to earn 10 million won. And if they failed, all participants would be charged 5 million won each. It seems the producers were angry. Because the cast was too passive, what are they going to do? Shouldn't they hold hands once? If they do it 10 times, it'll be 10 million won. Yang Tarin suddenly grabbed Cho Gyeongmo. While there were conversations going on all around and kissed him. This was something no one expected. What's going to happen next? Yang Tarin and Cho Gyeongmo each earn 10 million won. What's Gong Joa going to do now? All she could do was insult. The girl got up from the table and rushed away while Cho Jiamo tried to explain herself after her. He touched her, and the system told him that the touch of a real couple had been seen. Cho Gyeongmo and Gong Joa were charged 100,000 won each, but thanks to them, Kwa Nori was able to avoid the fine. Gong Joa thought it was strange. In fact, it pissed her off, but Cho Gyeongmo was also embarrassed. Because of the possible fine, he couldn't refuse. But Bong Yeonsik didn't care. All he could think about was that his girlfriend was doing well. It's separators. There shouldn't be any complaints, right? Well, it was necessary to change the general attitude. It's just a game, but Cho Yangmo couldn't forget that kiss, and that made his girlfriend very angry. And Kwe Nuri was thinking about who he would like to touch. He offered Yang Tabder in some wine, and she gladly accepted it. His girlfriend exclaimed how much Leah Mongju's glasses were going on, but his fiancée tried to keep her cool. It's a game. It's just a game, which means you have to keep your cool. If you shake the wine, the flavor will become more. That's enough. Yang Taren wouldn't let him do more. She could have made even more money. So why was Cho Gyeongmo so worried about it? What on earth was she doing to him? His heart was pounding loudly. Once inside Gong Joa, asked Bong Yun sik to go to room with her. She remembered her assignment, and he agreed. There, the girl wanted to know, didn't he get mad when his girlfriend kissed another guy? Of course it was bold, but Yang Taren was actively participating in the game. Was it true that they loved each other? So much so that Bong Yun sik supported everything she did. Uh, Is that it? And he walked out of the room with Cho Jiang Mo appearing on the doorstep. Dumbfounded. He wondered what the two of them were doing alone, to which Gong Jua replied that they were just having a dialogue. Was the girl still angry about that kiss? She answered in the negative, citing the fact that Cho Jiangmo didn't want it. The next time Yang Tiring offered him a drink of wine, the guy took it, albeit with suspicion. Was he very surprised then? Definitely. The girl liked it though. He was definitely more confused now. Cho Gyeongmo didn't know how to react properly. She liked the kiss after all. Yang Taren was jealous of his girlfriend. She did it. She had done her assignment. Only Cho Gyeongmo didn't know that, which was why his reaction was so embarrassed. What was this Yang Taren up to? Why were they drinking just the two of them? 
All the other actors joined in happily. But look at Gong Jua's face. Someone even wanted her to sing. Well, the girl agreed. She was applauded. But she wasn't happy. When Gong Jua sang, Yoon Shik acted really weird. And Young Taren saw that. But it really was great. The former singer went outside. And Yoon Shik followed her. Was there really something he wanted to say to her? He remembered all the things he had said to her back then, when Gong Joa needed support, when she didn't believe in herself. What had changed? She was beautiful when she sang. Those words had taken her aback. The most beautiful of everyone here. Her heart was pounding frantically because of embarrassment. Well, it was time for anonymous letters. In the hewn hour, they could mail a letter. Write a short message with only the recipient's name and put it in the mailbox. Participation was optional. And also, you could not write to your other half. And now it was time for the results to be tallied. Gong Jua got 20,000, Yuan Sik got 80,000, Cho Jiang Mo got 10 million and 220,000, and Taren got 10 million and 520,000 won. She was in the lead. Pandora's mission could now be revealed. Everyone was terribly curious. Nori failed when he tried to hug Yang Taren. Cho Guanmo also failed. Yang Taren, on the other hand, was able to do it. What about Yu and Sik? The guy had to tell the other contestant that she was the prettiest. Wow, what a game. But Gong Joa believed it. Gong Joa's anger took over. She believed her ex-boyfriend and even wrote a letter. Well, it seemed unnecessary because now it wouldn't be needed. When she heard the meaning of Bon Yongzik's assignment, Kan Jua froze in astonishment and looked at him. She clutched the envelope in her hand and shook with anger or frustration. The announcer announced that Taren, Jua, and Yunsik had successfully completed their missions and were receiving an additional 5 million won each. Kan Jua abruptly turned around and ran to the second floor. Yunsik gave her back a long look. Taren and Jonsik went to their room and when they saw the double bed, they realized that they would have to sleep together. It didn't make them too happy, but there was no choice. Taryn sank down on the bed. The microphone was to be turned off after midnight, so they had to keep on acting as a couple. The first episode was going to be uploaded at 6 in the morning. Jonsik asked about the shower, meaning which one of them would go first, but Taryn was a little taken aback, having understood his words differently. When the guy clarified, she was embarrassed and told him to go first. The guy nodded and headed for the shower room while brushing the skin of his neck. Taryn noticed the redness on it, but didn't pay much attention and began to sort through her things. She felt kind of awkward sharing a room with Jonsik, even though she was the originator of the idea of coming to the show. When the guy came out and it was Taryn's turn, she noticed the special care products in the bathroom and assumed that Jonsik was allergic. Kenmo asked Jua what exactly she and Yunsik had talked about after her show. The girl tried to brush off the question, but the guy insisted. Jua flared up, repeating that she hadn't discussed anything like that with Yunsik. She shouldn't have to justify herself to Kenmo, who had not only talked to Taryn, but even kissed her. The boy objected that this kiss was forced but his girlfriend jumped in, noticing that he didn't even resist. Kenmo was quiet for a moment and then said that they needed to win and kissing Taryn didn't even hurt their image but rather did them good. A voice sounded, announcing the arrival of anonymous messages for Kenmo and Jua. Two envelopes were slid under the door. The letter for Kenmo read kiss again tomorrow and there was no doubt as to who the sender was. Jua shuddered again, and the boy awkwardly remarked that Taryn really was crazy. Then her letter was opened by Jua, and saw only one word I'm sorry Kenmo didn't know what he was apologizing for, or who he was apologizing to, but Jua recognized Yensik's handwriting. He was apologizing for the fact that his words about her beauty ended up being only part of the assignment. Jua put the envelope away, and promised to explain everything later when the show aired. It was 1 o'clock in the morning, and the microphones finally turned off. Yensik and Taryn lay down. The guy drew a line, asking them not to cross it. Taryn instantly became enraged, thinking it was childish nonsense, and began frantically fumbling her hand across the line. Yensik warned that they could be fined for touching, too. Taryn lay back, muttering that the guy was taking this show too seriously. Then she turned and whispered that the cameras were still rolling, which meant they'd better sleep facing each other. Yunsik obediently rolled onto his side. They were getting very uncomfortable. The boy asked Taryn if she had any regrets. But it was too late to retreat, and the girl advised Yunsik himself to make a firm decision rather than flounder between revenge and love for Jua. 
At 6 o'clock in the morning, while the contestants were still sleeping, the first episode of the reality show Divergent aired and created an unprecedented furor. The phone vibrated. A sleepy Terran reached for Yunsik, mistaking him for Kenmo, to wake him up and almost touch someone else's shoulder, but immediately remembered. They both sat up abruptly on the bed. Taryn looked at her smartphone, bursting with calls and messages. The first episode had come out, and everyone was actively texting the girl. Yun Shiku was also texting more than usual as much as two messages a night. The network was actively discussing the show. Some people thought the show was crazy. Others discussed the couples, saying that Juwa and Kenmo were very compatible. Juwa was at the top of search terms thanks to the show. Overall, the pairing of Juwa and Kenmo was mostly talked about. Taryn found comments about herself. Some people liked her, while others called her lame. And about her and Jounsik, they said that there were no deep feelings between them, since they had only recently started dating, but they weren't jealous of each other at all. Taryn was puzzled. It looked from the outside like they were only participating for show. Jounsik noticed that they really weren't jealous of each other and that was the problem. Last time, they were stumped with tricky questions because they didn't know anything about each other. Taryn suggested that before turning on the microphones they memorize all the basic information about each other birthday, family, friends, preferences, what they like, what they don't, and the like. Yunsik exhaled tiredly, but the girl ordered him not to get discouraged. They sat down and debriefed. Taryn asked Yunsik his MBTI. The guy didn't understand what she meant and then Taryn asked about the hated type. Yunsik, looking at the girl suspiciously closely, replied that it was an inconsiderate, ill-mannered, and rude person. In Taryn's mind, it was a person who jumped to conclusions and judged people because of their own prejudices. Now it was Yunsik's turn to feel awkward. They then decided to find out each other's favorite songs. Yunsik was Jua's glitter, and a close friend until recently was Jua. The microphones turned on and Taryn immediately energetically wished Yunsik good morning, calling him by an affectionate nickname. The girl sent him to wash up first, as she still had to pick out his clothes. Taryn clarified about the allergies. Yunsik did indeed have one. The girl, after a little thought, decided it was because of the wool that yesterday's sweatshirt was made of. The material was not suitable for her allergy-prone skin, so Taryn started looking for something else. Kenmo and Juwa were also checking social media after the show aired. It said that Juwa was the most beautiful contestant and that she should probably release an album. Kenmo remarked that revealing the idol's past was a good idea. The girl involuntarily recalled how she was once told that there was nothing noteworthy about her except for those performances under the alias Juju. But Kenmo Juju didn't say anything about it, only thanking him. Yunsik and Taryn got ready to go to the university. On the way they ran into Juju with Kenmo. The girl asked her boyfriend to take her to lectures, but he couldn't as he had an important meeting. That's when Yunsik suddenly intervened in their dialogue, offering to give Juwa a ride, since they also had a morning class. And so the three of them got into the cab. Taryn, radiant, told the driver her destination Conte University. All three of them took a cab to the university. Taryn and Jounsik started deliberately speculating about whether they were allowed to touch each other outside of the show, since they were supposedly barely restrained from doing so. Yunsik said something embarrassing again, calling last night hot despite the ban. Taryn then pitched forward and asked Chua if she would give them away to the show's producers if they started making out in a cab. The girl couldn't take the provocation and asked the driver to drop her off. Taryn pretended that there were no misunderstandings between them and everything was fine. However, Jua still made the cab stop and ran out of it, slamming the door loudly. Jounsik stared after her. Taryn, on the other hand, grinned. She hadn't even begun to provoke yet and already Jua was reacting in such a way. But then Taryn saw how thoughtful Jounsik was staring at her back and she gloomed. At the university, Jua immediately began to be recognized. People gathered around her, whispering, asking for her autograph. The girl smiled and waved to everyone. The same story was with Kenmo. He began to be recognized. The website of Kanta University published a picture of Jua, thus spreading the fact that she was studying there even more. Some people were surprised that she was such an unremarkable student, even though she was an idol in the past. And on Instagram, a picture of Kenmo was posted where he is sitting in a cafe with some girl. When Jiwa entered the auditorium, her fellow students were surprised that she did not take a sabbatical but came to the lecture. They came up to her to socialize. When Taryn came in, she too was surrounded by fellow students. They were all shocked that the girl had taken part in the show after all, except for some reason not with Kenmo, who had suddenly started dating Kan Jiwa, 
who was now sitting quietly in the auditorium. Taryn glanced at Jua, but soon the professor arrived and everyone went to their seats. When the lecture was over, Taryn briefly texted now to Yensik and he showed up in the auditorium. The boy happened to meet Jua's gaze, but she quickly averted it and walked out in the company of her acquaintances. Taryn and Yunsik stood outside. The girl asked if he had passed the ADBTI test. Yunsik offhandedly said that he had tested positive, thus giving away that he hadn't taken anything. Kenmo came to pick up Jua with a bouquet of flowers. Everyone around them whispered when they saw the familiar couple. They began to embrace them, complimenting them and wishing them good luck on the show. Taryn was about to upload to the network what they had planned. Yunsik was a little worried worrying about it. But Taryn repeated her words there was no turning back, and clicked the mouse. Pictures of the members of the separators appeared on the net, which other people immediately began to discuss. They were fresh photos. They showed Kenmo and Taryn. Together. The leaked photos of Yang Taryn and Chu Kenmo caused a stir in society. There was a heated discussion about the sudden revelation of their relationship. There was also a post where Taryn's acquaintance and Kenmo revealed that it was Taryn who raised Kenmo, acting as his personal stylist. She meticulously planned every detail of his look, from clothing to hairstyle. A video emerged showing Yunsik and Jua performing together in masks at the park. Now, it was clear to everyone who saw it that Kenmo and Juju had left their partners to be together. The strange behavior of the four was now fully understandable, including why Yunsik saved Jua from a collision instead of helping Taren. He was taking care of his ex, disregarding his current partner. Jua's odd behavior on her date with Yunsik also made sense. Many found Kenmo and Jua's actions repulsive. Kenmo and Jua were horrified when they saw what was happening on social media. Kenmo, realizing who might be behind this, called Taryn, but she didn't answer. Kenmo gritted his teeth and punched the dashboard. Even the staff of the show Heartbreakers was disturbed by the latest news about the relationships of this group and Kenmo and Jua's actions. They were worried it could harm the show, as it wasn't about despicable traitors. The viewers' perception of Heartbreakers could change. Taryn and Yunsik nonchalantly returned to the common living room, where the other participants greeted them with surprise at the latest news. Kenmo and Jua were still on their way. Kenmo suggested denying everything, pretending they knew nothing. Jua disagreed. She believed they should acknowledge their past relationships with Yunsik and Taryn. They couldn't say they simply broke up, but that they cheated. The others bombarded Yunsik and Taryn with questions. Before they could respond, Kenmo and Jua burst in. Kenmo immediately accused Taryn and Yunsik of leaking the photos. Jua tried to calm him down so they wouldn't cause a scene in front of the others, but he was already shaking with anger. Taryn acted as if they knew nothing and were also hurt by it, and the encounter on the show was unexpected for them too. She said the public finding out about their past relationship was just a matter of time, as that secret would have been revealed sooner or later. Kenmo scratched his head. He suspected that Taryn had planned this all along. She even came to the show under the slogan of transfers hinting at cheating on Kenmo with Jua to appear as a suffering couple with Yunsik. The participants watched their quarrels with undisguised curiosity. Kenmo turned to them and stated that falling in love is not a crime. Jua tried to stop him, as those words portrayed her partner as too fickle. Jua turned to Yunsik and asked him why transfer specifically, considering she had broken up with him and started dating Kenmo. Yunsik sighed through clenched teeth. He only remembered Jua silently turning and walking away. To be blunt, she never suggested breaking up with Yunsik. This time, they tried to calm them down and save the discussion for a meeting. However, Kenmo only became more agitated and suggested first establishing whether Bon Yunsik and Yang Taren were really a couple. Yunsik and Taren exchanged tense glances. Kenmo cried out that Yunsik and Taren had only been dating for five days and that this raised doubts about their participation in the show. He accused them of pretending to be a couple in order to get on the breakup show. Yunsik and Taryn exchanged tense glances. Before posting the photo, they believed that Kenmo and Jua would definitely start suspecting them. They had a plan for this scenario. When Kenmo suggested that Yunsik and Taryn were pretending to be a couple and came on the show just for revenge, he basically made a fool of himself. Taryn noticed that since they hadn't cheated on him, there was no reason for revenge, but now Kenmo was claiming the opposite. Kenmo Finding himself in an extremely awkward position, began to stammer. Taryn continued to play the innocent victim. She supposedly hoped that Kenmo and Jua would be happy to see them and not suspect anything. Tears even welled up in her eyes. The girl pressed on, pointing out that she was left alone and Yunsik was the only one there to support her in such a difficult moment. 
In other words, it turned out that Kenmo had no right to doubt their feelings, as he had broken up with Terran himself. She turned away and headed for the exit. Yunsik ended the conversation by saying that Kenmo, since he had left her, should not have offended Terran with suspicions. After that, the guy left too. Now the surrounding people willingly believed in the relationship between Terran and Yunsik and in their betrayal. Kenmo nervously started biting his nails. He understood that the feelings between Yunsik and Terran were a complete farce. Meanwhile, a show staff member approached him, asking if they had cheated on their partners in reality, or if it was all a lie. If this was true, there would be a question of disqualifying Kenmo and Jua on ethical grounds. The guy tried to assure that they really had not cheated on anyone or left anyone. Jua quietly left the room. Kenmo suggested discussing this in an interview and followed his girlfriend. Jua approached the couple and asked Taryn to leave them alone, as she needed to talk to Yunsik. The guy tried to avoid the conversation, saying he had nothing to say, but Taryn pushed him to talk, and then she left, leaving them alone. They sat in awkward silence. Jua was the first to break it. She informed him that she would never believe that their meeting was a coincidence. Yunsik used to refuse to participate in the breakup show and now he was here. The guy replied that it was Taryn's desire, and he just supported her. Jua clenched her fists and asked if he would support her if she asked. Yunsik answered positively and got up, walking away. Meanwhile, Kenmo approached Taryn, also wanting to talk. The girl believed they had nothing to talk about. Then she waited, believing that Kenmo just needed a break in their relationship, but when he posted a photo with Jua on his Insta. Yunsik was honest with her, and it was painful for him too, so they grew closer. Taryn, bumping into the guy's shoulder, left, saying in parting that she was still very hurt. Perhaps now Taryn wasn't even lying about her feelings. At the interview, Taryn confirmed the fact that Kenmo was her ex. She had suspected that the truth would eventually come out, but she didn't expect it to happen so soon. Yunsik supported this lie, saying he also didn't expect to run into Jua at the show and was taken aback when he saw her at the first shoot. Kenmo, on the other hand, acknowledged the fact of his breakup with Taryn, although he apologized for it. And Jua said she had long been thinking of breaking up with Yunsik and did so. Only then did she allegedly meet Kenmo. His being Taryn's ex was nothing more than a mere coincidence. Taryn explained that initially she and Yunsik just sympathized with each other but now it's serious. And Kenmo assured the truth of his feelings for Jua. In any case, doubts were raised about their participation in the show given their relationships. If anyone was against it, there was a need to discuss disqualification. Jua and Kenmo could not allow this, as they were offered a contract with KMK. But since they had a past relationship with each other, physical contact was considered natural. It was also a convenient position that created an imbalance among the participants. To some extent, participating in the show despite their exes was a breach of the rules. The four of them were asked to discuss this among themselves. Kenmo claimed that nobody would ever shake his and Jua's feelings. Their stance was clear. They eventually decided to gauge the audience's reaction after the second episode and decide whether to replace participants. Kenmo and Jua agreed to this reluctantly, while Taryn and Yunsik were enthusiastic. Awkwardness arose between the show's participants. Quack Nuri suggested they communicate informally with each other to avoid the appearance that only the four of them had bonded. Taryn was the first to agree to this. The announcer's voice notified them of the arrival of Pandora's mission on their watches. Jua received a task with the condition that rewards for physical contact would not be doubled during the mission. Specifically, her task was to hold hands with another participant. Kenmo's mission was more complicated to be alone with another female participant and kiss her. It was then announced that a soon-to-be held outdoor date, and according to the amount won, a participant could choose a partner in desired date scenario. They were all stunned. The right to choose a partner was first given to Taryn. Recently, when they had just uploaded photos, Taryn warned Yunsik that things had truly begun and they needed to act more aggressively, and it would be advisable to get Kanjua out of his head. Yunsik grumbled that it was all in the past, but the girl hardly believed him. Now, Taryn chose Kenmo as her date partner. The answer was accepted. Because of this, Kenmo, as the second place winner in prize money, lost his right to choose. This evoked mixed feelings in the pair, but he could do nothing but accept it. Next was Nuri. He chose Sanhi. After Miss Yuri, Manju was chosen. In the absence of other partners, Yunsik and Jua became partners automatically. Kenmo grunted angrily. Yunsik said everything turned out as he wanted, surprising Jua with this. 
Then the participants were asked to write down their desired date plan and hand it in. Taryn was the first to write down a plan, under the tense gazes of Kenmo and Jua. She remembered Kenmo's words, spoken in a fit of emotion, that nobody could shake his and Jua's feelings. Taryn just smirked. From that moment on, she and Yun-sik planned to make that couple of cheaters suffer and depend on them. Yun-sik reached out his hand to Jua, inviting her to come with him. The girl hesitated but ultimately grasped his hand, earning 10,000 won for the touch. Kenmo drilled Jua with his gaze, but she did not reciprocate, staring ahead with tension. Both pairs got into their cars. Kenmo thought about how he had no idea where the place Taren had directed him to was, and Jua wondered where Yunsik would take her. When they arrived, Kenmo was surprised to realize they were at an address for a clothing store. Taren joyfully announced that they would be improving his style. It immediately reminded him of the comment that Taren had been his personal stylist once before. The guy felt it was a formal mockery. However, Taren did not seem concerned or remorseful. She took his arm, earning a hundred thousand won. Looking at him with innocent eyes, Taren assured him that she just wanted to take care of Kenmo. The guy gritted his teeth but remained silent, obediently following her into the store. There, Taren immediately began selecting clothes for Kenmo as she used to do. In the process, she casually touched him and received money towards her prize fund. Kenmo tried on the outfit Taren had chosen, and Jua, in awe, loudly declared to the whole store that a model was standing before them. The guy tried to hush her so as not to make things awkward. Not wasting any time, Taren went back to choosing clothes. Inquiring about Kenmo's feelings, she asked if he enjoyed recalling the past. In response, he suggested that Taren try on something he had picked out himself. However, she was horrified when she saw that the outfit her date had selected went out of style 20 years ago. Despite this, she agreed to try it on. When she did, Kenmo was stunned by her beauty. Blushing and unable to meet Taren's gaze, he muttered that it didn't look bad at all when she asked him about her appearance. Smiling, she advised Kenmo to always dress like that, as Brown looked great on him. This made the guy blush even more. After that, they moved on to another location, and on the way, Taryn earned another 100,000 by repeating the touch. As they walked along the street, participants of the show separators recognized them and whispered. They commented that Taryn suited Kenmo more than Jua, but then rumors of the guy's cheating quickly spread. Taryn turned to overhear the gossip. Winking, she promised onlookers all the juicy details of the show's second episode. Then, she quickly walked away, dragging along the struggling Kenmo. Yunsik and Jua sat in a restaurant. The girl felt out of place and absent-minded. After confirming her desired dish, Yunsik placed the order. They ate in silence, with Yunsik watching Jua attentively. Overwhelmed by tension, Jua shivered, and, unable to bear it, asked what exactly they would be doing. Yunsik shrugged, as he had chosen the most ordinary date scenario. He had no intention of playing and earning, he simply enjoyed watching Jua eat with appetite. Jua's heart skipped a beat. Memories flooded back of how Yunsik had once worried about her diet and how she had fainted due to her weight loss. However, now she couldn't believe in the sincerity of Yunsik's words. She convinced herself that his behavior was once again related to Pandora's mission. Taryn and Kenmo returned from shopping. Taryn casually mentioned that she had never had as much fun shopping with anyone as she did with Kenmo. The guy warmly smiled but then gave himself a slap on the cheek, trying to bring himself back to reality. Suddenly, Kenmo and Taryn received a message on their smartphones asking if they wanted to see how their partner's dates were going. The same notification arrived for Jua and Yensik. In the end, all the participants wanted to see how their significant other spent time on their date. Kenmo, barely glimpsing the photo that was sent, stared in surprise. Yensik and Jua looked like a real couple, and the captured moment seemed very intimate. Jua was not pleased with the photo either. It didn't seem like Kenmo was bored in it, as if he was having a good time with his ex. Taryn and Yunsik were happy with their photos, considering that they did well. They were the only ones who reacted positively as the other couple seemed to darken suddenly. As they left the restaurant and headed back, Jua looked dejected, but when Yunsik asked her how she was feeling, she waved him off. He then suggested that she hold his hand so they wouldn't lose. Jua hesitated but eventually took Yunsik's hand, earning money for herself. She stole a glance at the serious profile of the boy and squeezed his hand tighter. Finally, everyone gathered in the living room. Taryn and Yunsik greeted each other joyfully while Kenmo and Jua looked sour. Jua complained that everything went horribly, and Kenmo hastily agreed with her. They couldn't say what they really wanted to say. 
What does this photo mean? Why did you look so happy? These were the words that they wanted to say, but they remained silent. A heavy atmosphere of unspoken words arose between them. Nuri and Yuri reacted normally to the photos. However, Sanhi said that she didn't even look at the photos, while her boyfriend Manju hesitated. When they were cooking together and Yuri touched Manju, Sanhi, filled with jealousy, watched them intently. She was distracted by Taryn, who approached with a question about the girl's drink preferences, soju or beer. Sani was in favor of a mix. Then Taryn promised to treat her to a mixed drink with Guinness. Ken Mo, stumbling upon these two drinks in the fridge, immediately remembered the time they drank them together with Taryn. His reminiscences were interrupted by the tense gaze of Yunsik, which made him uncomfortable, so he hurried to leave. On the rooftop, the participants were grilling barbecue and drinking, interacting with each other's partners. Nuri suggested playing truth or dare Yuri supported, adding the condition that whoever couldn't answer had to drink soju in one go. The others were also fine with it. Nuri was the first to spin the bottle. The neck pointed at Manju. Yuri asked him a question. She asked if someone besides Sani among those present was liked by the boy. Manju and Sani were unpleasantly surprised. In the end, the boy mumbled a negative answer and hurried the next turn. This time, the bottle pointed at Yuri. Sani asked her the same question that Yuri had recently asked Manju. The girl scratched her cheek with her nail, surprising everyone. She answered positively. Next in line for a question was Taryn. Nuri asked her if she considered herself prettier than Juwa. Juwa choked at such directness. Instead of answering, Taryn drank a shot of soju. Then the bottle pointed at Kenmo. Nuri asked him the same question as he did Taryn does Kenmo consider himself more beautiful than Yunsik? The boy confidently replied that yes he did. Taryn looked at Yunsik's profile. Of course Kenmo was handsome but... Before she could finish her thoughts, Yunsik turned to her gaze and she quickly looked away. The unfortunate bottle finally pointed at Yunsik. Nuri, doubting whether the question was too harsh or not, still asked him who had a more beautiful appearance his ex Yunsik or his current one. The question clearly stumped Yunsik and instead of answering he just drank a glass of soju, arguing that the question was absolutely tactless. Nuri awkwardly rubbed her neck, admitting that she had once again acted like a jerk and ruined the atmosphere. However, despite already having finished his drink, Yunsik added that in his eyes, Taryn was the most beautiful. This greatly surprised the girl herself. Jua looked at the guy with mixed feelings while the others just happily applauded, touched. Yunsik spun the bottle, and this time it pointed to Jua. Yuri asked Nuri not to ask anything else, disappointing the latter a bit. Taryn offered to ask a question. It was about whether she preferred love to friendship. The answer was rather positive. Taryn sighed, saying that there was no need to even ask about it, as everything was already clear. Because they were friends before. Taryn didn't want their friendship to be ruined because of a guy. But it did affect them. Wa observed that she didn't consider it a friendship and that Taryn was acting childish now. The girl unpleasantly admired how Jiwa held her tongue. Taryn liked their friendship, she wanted to take care of her friend. It was great to see how she adapted to college. And no matter the situation they were in now, if Taryn went back in time, she would still be friends with Jua. She would talk to her again, they would have lunch together in the cafeteria. And just spend time together. Wa, unable to hold back, stood up, demanding that the girl stop pretending to be cool once again. Both Kenmo and Yunsik in unison asked their angry partners to calm down. The girls chorused, telling them not to interfere, and finally sat down at the table. An awkward silence fell, with Jua spinning the bottle. It landed on Yunsik and the girl asked him if their date today was exciting. According to the plan, Yunsik was supposed to act more aggressively and get Jua out of his head so he drank at that moment. And he did. Taryn gritted her teeth in annoyance looking away. She knew that Yunsik had deliberately drunk, but it still somehow annoyed her. Yuri put her hand on Manju's shoulder, noting that the guy was already drunk, just like she was. Sani forcefully pushed the girl away from her boyfriend, advising her to go to sleep. As everyone began to disperse, Jua suggested to Yunsik to go get a hangover remedy. The guy agreed and they left together. Sanhi nervously asked Taryn if everything would be okay if they went together. Grim Taryn didn't answer. There was still Pandora's task that Jua needed to complete, holding hands, so she suddenly turned around and grabbed Yunsik's hands, intertwining their fingers. Remembering Kenmo and Taryn's kiss, she leaned in, seemingly wanting to do the same. However, Yunsik pushed her away by the shoulders. Jua didn't understand why and thought that maybe Taryn now liked Yunsik more than her. 
Yensik admitted that it was hard for him to meet Jua every time and he made incredible efforts to do so. Saying this, he turned around and left. Nuri shivered from the cold, and Yuri led him into the house. Taryn and Kenmo remained alone at the table. The girl asked him how he was enjoying the show, as he probably didn't expect them to meet here. But Kenmo said he had no regrets, as they were competing fairly. Taryn had no regrets either, but her next question made Kenmo nervous. She asked how he would react if she still couldn't forget him. The guy thought it was part of her Pandora mission. And since Taryn was using him to complete the mission, Kenmo decided to do the same. He leaned in for a kiss, but Juwa, who had returned with Yunsik, suddenly caught them. Wa demanded an explanation from Kenmo. He tried to say that it was not what she thought, but Wa was on the verge of tears. She grabbed the bewildered Kenmo's hand and dragged him along. A real couple was caught in the act and fined 100,001. Alone, Kenmo tried to convey that this was all just part of the game. Pandora's mission. Juwa sadly hung her head. She understood that they had no choice even though it upset and angered her. The girl tried to reassure herself that Kenmo would keep his promise and their feelings for each other would never change. The guy grasped onto that, agreeing and said that he also found the whole situation unpleasant but they were being watched. Juwa nodded. She didn't like that they couldn't even do something as simple as eat. So she decided to take action. Yunsik brought Tae Rin some tea and asked how she was feeling. The girl took the cup, replying that everything was fine. An alert sounded that they could send an anonymous letter within an hour. After that, they were all asked to gather in the living room. The results of the vote count were announced. Tae Rin had the most 16,600,001. Kenmo was in second place with 10,900,001. Nuri laughed that it was because their kiss was impossible to repeat. Then the contents of Pandora's mission for each participant were revealed. Everyone was tense with anticipation. Kenmo convinced himself that no matter what the task was, it didn't matter because no Pandora's mission could ever separate them. At least that's what he believed before. Kenmo's mission to kiss another participant and be alone with her was naturally a failure. The guy waited for Tae Rin's mission. He thought it had something to do with those words about how she would react if Tae Rin couldn't forget him. Maybe say something provocative or something like that. Kenmo's heart was pounding fiercely. Tae Rin's assignment turned out to be completely different. It was simply to hold another participant's hand for 10 minutes. And it was done. Kenmo was stunned. It seemed that the girl had asked him sincerely then. Tae Rin smirked at his surprise. Yunsik's task was also not what Juwa had imagined. He had to hug another participant while being alone with her. Hugs. But when he pushed Juwa away, instead of just hugging her and completing the task. But for some reason he didn't do it. In the end, Taerin, Jua, Nuri, and Yur successfully completed their missions and earned an additional 5 million won. Sitting on the floor in the room, Jua kept thinking about Yunsik's actions. Did he really find it so difficult to see her that he even sacrificed completing the task just to avoid hugging her? Anonymous letters were received by Kenmo, Taerin, and Yunsik. In Yunsik's letter, he was invited to the roof in an hour. The guy came and Jua was sitting there. She proposed to play truth or dare again and voiced the question recently asked by Nuri. Does he like his ex-girlfriend more than his current one? Yunsik crumpled the letter and replied negatively. Now it was his turn to ask. After a slight pause, he asked Jua if she regretted anything. 